Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. Today I have got two fabulous recipes. We are gonna make a Florida grapefruit and apple and California walnut crumble. Absolutely delicious. But first, we're gonna make some amazing croissants. We're gonna fill them with cured ham. I've got a selection of cheeses, tarragon mustard. They're gonna be delicious. Okay, Mother's Day soon. We need to start thinking about what we can cook for our mums out there. And I thought a really nice way to start a Sunday morning would be some beautiful, savoury croissants. Now, I'm not going to teach you how to make croissant dough because, well, we'd be here all day. So we're going to go with just roll croissant dough. So I'm going to try and open these. Emily knows my, um, <laughs> my um, concerns on these because they're really hard to open sometimes. Um, and sometimes they work. Ah, oh, there we go. And sometimes they don't. Right, there's one. I've actually got two, because I want to make, like, decent-sized croissants. You can get these everywhere now, um, in all the supermarkets. And they're really good, because all the hard work is done for you. But if you really wanted to make them yourself, go for a brioche dough, okay? which is enriched with eggs and butter. Oh, look at that, Emily. Look. Oh, I'm so relieved. That was my biggest worry about this recipe, was getting into these blooming tins. That's fine. Right, we'll leave those to one side and we'll get them ready in a second. Now, we're gonna make our filling, okay? So, we're going very Alpine, very Swiss, very French, all those lovely flavors. So I've got a little bit of mustard to begin with. If you don't like mustard at all, don't put it in, that's okay. Um, Is there any other types of mustard you can use? Or did you have now, that? yeah, so English mustard's like rocket fuel. Don't use that, it's too hot. Um, in my opinion, you could use Dijon, you could use whole grain mustard, German mustard's quite nice. Um, you can even use like that French's kind of American mustard if you want. It's entirely up to you. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I am going to put two egg yolks in there which will kind of help it go from sort of cheese-filled croissants to a more, a richer, more indulgent, sort of decadent texture. It's almost sort of leaning towards like a hollandaise. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's just gonna be, it's just gonna be nicer. Okay, so mix those together. Right, so that is my egg yolks and my mustard mixed together. So let's pop that to one side. Now I've got some tarragon here. Do you like tarragon, Emily? I do, absolutely love it. Don't use it enough. I, I always, whenever we use it, I'm like, oh, I love tarragon. It's so nice. It's good with fish. It's great with cheeses. You know, it's, it's just really, really, it's got that aniseed kind of flavor to it, but, but not too much. Great with tomatoes, really nice. So for me, it works very well with mustard um, and rich sort of flavors like this. So. If you haven't got fresh, use a little bit of dried. Dried tarragon is one of those very few dried herbs that work dry. Um, they, the fresh is milder than the dry. So if you are gonna use the dry, just use a tiny little bit. Um, so we're gonna chop that and then I've got some fresh thyme that's still growing in my garden, which has served me well this winter. This is actually lemon thyme, so it's a little bit more fragrant, a little bit lighter, but you can use any. So we'll chop those up. So this, this sort of egg yolks and mustard and stuff, is, it's kind of leaning towards a Bernays sauce. Have you heard of that? Yeah. So traditionally, a traditional French sauce. Um, oh, it smells good. That takes me back. Mm. College days, learning French cookery. There we go. So in that goes. I have got a little bit of Lancashire here, a bit of Mrs. Kirkham's, and then I've got a little bit of smoked um, cheddar from the Trapenna Cheese Company, and those guys have been in and visited us once before, and they've now got a really lovely smoked version of their cheddar, which is delish. So I'm gonna mix that. So you can pretty much use any cheeses you want. Um, it's a good one for using up. So I've got 
Bit of Mrs. Kirkham's, that's going in. Is there any cheese that you should avoid for this sort of thing? Is there I wouldn't put blue cheese in. Blue cheese is wrong. <laughs> it's mouldy. Why would you eat mould? <laughs> Fair no. enough. No. Blue cheese isn't really going to work with this flavour dynamic, but, you know, if you really have to put blue cheese in, put it in. But you want, like, nice, firm cheeses. You know, you could use... Double Gloucester, you could use Cheshire, you could use a bit of Wensleydale if you want, cheddar, um, you could use some of the Northern European cheeses like Gouda and Edam and, um, is it Liederhammer? Oh yeah. Um, so, you know, cheese with holes in. You could use those, you could use an Italian Pecorino if you wanted to, um, you could put slices of brie, that'd be quite nice if you fancied that sort of thing. But you wouldn't necessarily need to mix the eggs and the mustard and stuff like that. But I'm trying to kind of make this rare bit almost. It's almost mm. a rare, leaning towards a nice rare bit. It's the French Alpine breakfast I'm trying to achieve mm. here. So, we've skipped lunch, haven't we, Emily? Just so that we can eat yep. these after we've filmed it. So let's pop all that cheese in. And this actually will work really well. You could just mix this, pop it in the freezer, whatever's left over, keep in the freezer for another day for an amazing cheese toasty or do it again. You could put some of this just on two pieces of bread and whack them in the oven. Um, you could sit it on top of some smoked haddock. That would work really nicely. Okay, so there, done. Right, let's get our croissants out. And let's build this. So, let's have a look where the end is. Here we go. So, I've got two rolls of this croissant dough. Because we're going to make them a bit bigger and more substantial. Do you know what? I'm going to get rid of my board, which will please you, won't it, Emily? Yep. You don't like this board, do you? <laughs> right. Need a bit more length. There we go. Perfect. Right. So, what you can you see that there overhead? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six croissants. Okay. So let's lay. I've got some lovely cured ham. So this is the dry cured ham. You know, like Parma ham or Serrano ham, um, or the French would have it as well. Even in Cumbria, we have some really nice Wibberthwaites. Easier to say than you think, and not as easy as you think. Cured ham, so it needs to be like wafer thin. Could you fill it with like normal cooked ham? You could. Like, it's not as nice. Like vulture ham or... Yeah, you could, like cooked boiled ham type thing. Yeah. It's not as nice. Uh -huh. The texture isn't as nice as when you do it with this. I mean, you could, do you know what? You could put salamis in here, you could... Cured meats are better. Cured meats, because they're thinner, and they kind of melt in, you know, like the fats and the flavours. Yeah. Delicately melt into it, which I think is lovely. So all I'm doing is laying this on. I've got a few more sheets, so bear with me. <laughs> We're nearly there. It's a delicate job. Often what you can do as well is you can make this the night before. If you're doing this for Mother's Day, do it the night before and pop them in the fridge and slow the proving process right down by chilling them and that will stop them proving up too quickly. Or get up really early uh, and get them made in advance, ready for when Her Majesty wakes up. Nice pot of coffee, fresh warm croissant with ham and cheese. <gasps> It's gonna be good. Right, I need a little bit more ham. One second. Lucky I bought two packets. Mm -hmm. That's what happens when dad goes shopping. Bulk buy. <laughs> so we'll get a couple more pieces here. It's actually, when the cured ham is cold, it is much easier to handle. So don't get it out of the fridge too early. Right. Now, if you fancy the recipe here, please scan the QR code along the bottom uh, and it will take you to petersidwell.com or you could just type it in your search engine. Um, and all our recipes are there on our website. Or you can download our free app, which is Peter Sidwell's Kitchen in the App Store or the Google Play Store. 
free to download on your phone or your iPad, and it's all there, all our programs. Right, so we've got a layer of ham all the way along there, and then we take our mustardy tarragon cheese, and we're just gonna distribute it along, but you don't want like big thick wedges of it, all right? So you've gotta be, sort of take a bit of time to spread it out, okay? So use your fingertips, the lightest of touch, yeah? because you don't want to get all in a mess, but then you also want to make sure that every little bit gets the flavor combination of the mustard, the cheese, the ham, the beautiful sweet croissant dough. Oh, it's gonna be good this one, Emily. Mm. I think skipping lunch is a good idea today. Definitely worth it. This is gonna be good. So there we go. And then we're just going to press it down a little bit. Right, let me wash my hands. Now remember, if you've got any questions about today's recipes or any of the recipes that you might have seen on, on our previous programs, please do post them in the comments below. I'm here to help. If I can, I will. And it's great because lots of you asked loads of questions. It's really, really nice. We were just actually talking before that we're really sort of starting to build a community of people who enjoy watching the food and the cooking and stuff like that. So we are very grateful. So thank you for that. Now, let's roll our croissant dough on top so we're kind of getting double thickness here. Double croissant dough. Yeah, double and croissant dough. Like and then we're just gonna press it down. And now, because we're using um, these pre-made croissant dough rolls, we've got our guidelines, all right? But what we have done is we've made it double thickness. So cut them that way. Cut them quite well, because you've got to cut through that ham. So put a bit of pressure on. You could use a pizza wheel as well, which is quite easy to do. And then just slice. And we're going to make our croissant shapes, okay? This definitely reminds me of like, the days when we used to go skiing in the Alps and you would have lovely croissants with ham and cheese and oh, all those good things. Those I, were the days. I quite often like a savoury croissant like that. Yeah. Right. Let's just, just be able to make your own from fresh years and then rolls. Yeah, yeah. Well, it takes all the work out. You've just got to get the ingredients and pop them in. So I'm just going to separate them. So they're a decent size, these. They're... Um, <laughs> Yeah, you're not going to be hungry after having one of these for your brekkie. If you just want to do them vegetarian, could yeah. you just do it with the cheese? Absolutely, just do it with the cheese. No problem at all. You could do it, but you could put, uh, if you wanted to, you could add like um, some cooked mushrooms might be quite nice in there. They would work well. You could wilt some spinach down and you could put that in if you prefer. Um, so yeah, definitely. No need to put ham in if you don't fancy it. Can you make, the way you're doing them with the rolls, could you yeah. make them sweet? Yeah, do you know what I would, I was just thinking about Thomas then, he would love Nutella and then crumbled up nuts in there. You know, maybe get some walnuts and just crumble them in so you get a nice crunch. You could do it with cinnamon and sugar if you wanted to. Um, you could do it with jam. You just got to watch the jam's going to leak out because when jam heats up, it goes liquid. Yeah. Which is why we put the egg yolks in the cheese because it kind of binds it and it'll stick yeah. it together. Um, but yeah, you could put, I don't know, you could put all sorts. Mm. You could do garlic ones. You could do like garlic butter, Ooh. pesto. That'd be pesto nice. Pesto mozzarella. Pesto and mozzarella. You could go more lunch style then. You could do torito in there. Um, maybe a little bit of manchego and a quince paste, that would be nice. Ooh. They're all three very Spanish flavours that you could pull together. Carlos is ignoring us. <laughs> he, don't, he won't agree with that. <laughs> right, okay, so we've got all our triangles. Now, where's the best one to show you how to roll a croissant? Uh, just where you are right now. This one? Perfect, yeah. Okay, so you want, the, you want a right angle triangle, okay? And then what I'm going to do is cut a little piece there which will allow me to just roll. Now, when you roll a croissant, you don't roll it forward, you go out like that. Can you see that right? Yeah. So it's that action. So when you roll, you kind of do that. <laughs> My gray hair is getting in the way. Yeah. So there is our first one. 
Okay. So we'll do another one. I'll put it in the same place. Yep, perfect. I'll lean back for you. Thank you. Because you don't need to see my silver mullet. What happens if you did roll them straight on? They kind of bulk up in the middle. Right. So I'm putting the pressure on so that you don't end up with a huge dome in the middle. You've got a slightly more even roll. And I know when I learned how to make croissants in a bakery, it was always that way. So there's our next one. And they, normally they would stretch them right out as a raw dough, but because we've got a filling, I want the filling to run all the way through. And if I stretch them, they'd end up without some of the cheese and without some of the ham. There we go. I'm going to have to go and buy some of this dough. No. It is quite useful. You can also just tuck them in like that as well if you prefer. Some people like a round croissant like that. Some people like them left open. I don't care because they're going to taste good. So I'm just going to tuck them in actually because then I can fit them all on one tray. And that is the only reason why I'm doing that. So you just tuck them in and then just squeeze that together. I'm so excited. I know. They look good, don't they? Yeah. They do. Right. All the work done by Just Roll. Thank you very much. All we've done is find some awesome ingredients to put in there. They've done all the work for us, which is fab. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm just, as I'm doing this last one, um, I'm going to leave them to prove for about half an hour just to sort of relax because we've unraveled them all. They don't need to prove because um, they're ready to go in the oven as they are. But I know that leaving them just for half an hour for everything just to settle back down will be a really good move here. Just let them chill, preheat the oven, get that ready, do any other jobs that you want. Then they can go into the oven. I'm gonna put these in at 170 degrees and they're probably gonna take a good half an hour to cook. And I would let them rest for about 10, maybe 15 minutes if you can, just to let everything settle back down before you serve them up. Okay, right. My croissants smell amazing. They look good. They will not be long, I promise. But there is just enough time to make the perfect pudding for your mum on Mother's Day. So we're going to make a Bramley apple and Florida grapefruit crumble. And the crumble is going to be made with California walnuts. Now, me and Emily did a few tests earlier in the week and... We made an apple and Florida grapefruit crumble and it was absolutely delicious, wasn't it? And, yeah, it was really And the Florida nice. grapefruits just really bring the apple-y flavour out. Uh, and it was purely an experiment because I've never made it before, but I thought, Do you know what? We're going to make it. So, first thing we need to do is peel our Bramley apples. And you know I like to peel it in one, don't you? Yep. <laughs> Always a game. I like to get a hat trick. Pippa's heard the peeler. And here she comes, thinking that she's going to get it. Yeah, that's good enough for me. There's one. Hello. Fancy seeing you here. I'll have to fight it for the Bromley apple. I like a piece of Bromley oh. apple. Feed the animals. <laughs> right, so I would always try and use Bramley apple, but you don't have to, okay? Um, you can use any apple you like. It's just Bramley apple works really well. It breaks down a little bit. Um, and they're not too sweet. In fact, they're quite sour, to be honest. There's two. Right, we're going for the hat trick, guys. Going for the hat trick. <laughs> going for the big win. Go big or go home is what I say. Right, here we go. What other apple would you recommend, though, if you could? I like a Granny it? Smith, because they're quite oh, tart, aren't they? Yeah. You, you yeah. run the risk of going, if you go like Pink Lady, they're too sweet for cooking yeah, with. Pink Ladies, yeah, soft, they? they're just nice to eat, I think, Pink Ladies. I think Granny Smiths are a good replacement for a cooker. Yeah. But you can't beat a good Bramley, can you? Look at yeah. that. Got the hat trick. There we go. Right. It's Grab the a little knife. things in life. <laughs> it is the little things in life that keep Peter happy. So... I'm just going to cut them into quarters. 
This is where Pip gets really interested, isn't it? <laughs> oh, those big brown eyes. And then just remove the core. I'm not sure you'd like a Bramley Pip. Might be a bit sour for you. <laughs> right, let's go. So all I'm gonna do, remove the core. I'm also gonna get my pan on hot, ready to cook. So let's just remove these. Okay, so quartered, peeled, core removed. Okay, so I'm just going to cut them down the middle. So each quarter into four and we'll get them in the pan and we'll get them going. It's important that you get the apples in first while you then prepare the Florida grapefruit because I want the Florida grapefruit's fresh flavour to work with the apples, okay? And balance out the sweetness because we'll add a little bit of sugar. But what, what seems to happen is they sort of, they go a sort of really yellowy color, don't they, when they're mm. cooked, but they really bring the flavor out of the apple and they work so well together. Um, and that's something new. I've never done that before. It was just about a bit of experimentation. And we do work with Florida grapefruit on recipe development for them. So it was a really, a really good discovery that apple and Florida grapefruit work. And now we can start developing new things as well. So, in with our apple, and I've got some caster sugar. Now, if you want the recipe, Carlos will put it down the side here for you of ingredients, but if you want the full recipe, scan the QR code, or go to petersidwell.com and you'll get the recipe there. All our recipes from all our shows. I think there is well over 100, maybe nearly 150 programs now that we've got there for you. And if you download our free app, they're all right there in your hand, really easy to get hold of and find. So, sugar and apples, okay? Already a good combination. Yeah, nice little base for our crumble. Is there any other fruit you could pair the Florida grapefruit with for a crumble? Well, interesting you say that. I think we might try some pears soon, because mm. I think pear and Florida grapefruit will work as well. Um, and I think, I mean, I don't know, I always like a good apple crumble. Uh, it's, yeah. it's kind of, it's, it's the base in it, really. Yep. Right, let's get our Florida grapefruit going. So, Florida grapefruits are available in UK supermarkets from sort of January, February, and March, maybe the first half of March. So it's quite good timing. They're in there, and they are absolutely delicious. They're one of the few fruits that are quite seasonal still, um, and you can only get them for like three months of the year in this country. So I've cut the top and the bottom off. Let's just squeeze that juice in there because we don't want to lose it. Always use every little bit you can and then cut round. Because I've cut the top and the bottom off, that means it's flat, it's not going to roll around and it's going to mean that I can just easily cut all the way around. So your knife starts flat and it finishes flat, okay? So you start flat, you work round, you work round, and you finish flat. And that's how you segment a citrus fruit. Take all these bits, give them a squeeze. Don't want to lose those, because there's always going to be little bits of juice in there. And if you've already maybe zested your grapefruits and put them into a cake, brilliant, perfect. Now you can add the, add the actual fruit into this crumble. You can make this crumble as well. You can make the fruit base and put it in the freezer. And I, what I would do is make it, cook it, put it in the tin you're gonna bake it in and freeze it like that. And then when you want it, bring it out and then make the crumble topping. Right, so we'll segment. So you cut on the inside of each, sort of you get a little white membrane, cut inside it on both sides and then the segment just pops straight out really easily then we've got absolutely tons of Florida grapefruit recipes on their website. So if you follow the website along the bottom now, it will take you to their website where there's loads of recipes. So let's squeeze that juice in there because that is all flavor. And then we will do the other one. There's my segments. Get rid of that pip. So cut the top, cut the bottom off. Squeeze them in and then well, can we see this all right, me doing this, Emily? Yeah. Yeah? So we've got our new camera angle, haven't we? Is that what you're yeah, using? A little bit closer towards the middle of the chopping board. There we go. 
So I'm using a 20 centimeter Cook's knife. To be honest, I use this for most jobs because I just get so used to it, so comfortable with it, and it does all the jobs I want it to do. Nice and sharp. Squeeze the skin, get the juice out, and then get that in the bin. What's quite nice about I think Florida grapefruit as well, they're not like they're not a tangy grapefruit, they're quite a floral grapefruit. They're lovely, aren't They've got they? So much more flavour to them. Yeah. I think when I first tried them, I'd, I've had grapefruit before and it's just you can't get a flavour for them, but as soon as I tried these ones, yeah, well, really, I looked, really, really good. Once a year, we get a project to do to create some delicious recipes for Florida grapefruit, and I kind of, I quite look forward to it really because it's in the winter, um, and I know I'm going to get these amazing fruits to work with. And and Emily's right; they're really floral and fresh, and vibrant and delicious. Super good for you. Full of vitamin C. Great for your heart health as well. You know, they'll help contribute to reducing your blood pressure. If you can get them into your diet, help lowering cholesterol, that's always a good thing. Um, so they are a good fruit to get into your diet on a week, you know, all the time. Right, okay, so I'm just gonna drain that juice off that's come off. That's going in the pan. Could turn the heat up now, we've got a little bit more liquid in there. And then I'm just gonna roughly chop up my Florida grapefruit segments. And they're going straight in, okay? Right, let's get rid of that. Right. A little wipe down, we like a tidy, don't we, Emily? Yep. Is it, just when you said the caster sugar that you've used, yeah. like sometimes if I make an apple crumble, I sometimes use brown sugar just for a yeah. little bit more. Would that, like caramelisation, would that work I, with this? Or is, I tend to steer away from brown sugar when I'm doing something quite sort of clean and fresh and fruity. But if you want a caramelised apple crumble, you totally would use brown sugar. But we're sort of, we want a sort of cleaner, fruitier flavour. So I've just gone caster sugar on this for this occasion. Right, gonna add a pinch of salt. Might seem a bit strange, but it does just make a difference. And it won't make a massive difference, but if you were to taste them side by side, the one with the salt in would be nicer, promise. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's make the crumble. Now, this crumble is gluten-free, which Ooh. is always good news. <laughs> Emily gets very excited about that, don't you? Yep. So we're gonna take our California walnuts, and we're just gonna break them up in our hand. Now this is a really simple recipe and it's interchangeable, which I think is always good because depending on what you've got in your cupboards and fridges will dictate what kind of crumble you make. But stick to the recipe for the crumble and for the fruit and you'll be fine. Okay, so let's just break that up. And there is going to be one ingredient in here that you're not going to have seen before in a crumble, but we'll get to that in a minute. Right, okay. So, we've got some rice flour going in. You could use gluten-free flour, you could use a nut flour, it's entirely up to you. We've got our oats. There we go, and I've got some butter. And then the only thing I want to do now is just add, I've forgotten to weigh it out, but that's okay. Couple of tablespoons of sugar, that's it. You don't want loads of sugar in it because you've got a sweetness in there as well. Now my butter is at room temperature, you can see, so I can break it up really easily. You could use a plant-based butter if you wanted to make this, you know, completely dairy-free. Easily done, there's some amazing plant-based butters out there that pretty much do the same job. Um, but I'm just going in with that little bit of butter. You could use margarine if you wanted to, but I don't think it's as nice, if I'm brutally honest. But if it matters to you, then change it, interchange it, it's absolutely fine. I think a block of butter kind of gives you a smaller crumb, doesn't it? Sometimes margarine can come together. It gets a bit greasy, Yeah. if you're not careful. I mean, there are lots of brands out there, and, and you may well say some that don't, but I do tend to find that it goes, I mean, if you look at that crumble, I mean, look at that. I mean, it's nutty, it's like 
clumpy in a good way. OT, it's going to be really, really good. Right. Now, I'm going to add an egg yolk to my crumble. Oh. What do you think about that, Emily? Uh, strange. <laughs> I thought you might say that. <laughs> it's going to help it be more crumbly. There we go. Just one. Okay. And obviously, if you know, if you were plant-based, you wouldn't add it. It'll still work without it, but it makes it really, really nice. Really nice. Almost leaning towards a bit of flapjack, if you like. Ooh. So there you go. That is a serious crumble topping. Let me wash my hands. Right, hands washed. One final job. Got a little bit of corn flour here. I'm just gonna add a touch of water. Now, I think you call it corn starch in America, um, but obviously we call it corn flour in this country. So we're just gonna mix that with a little bit of water and that's gonna help take the liquid that your apples and your Florida grapefruit are cooking in and turn it into sort of a sauce, if you like and kind of hold it all together. You don't want to add too much, follow the recipe, because you don't want it to be too sort of gummy and too sort of weird, but then you don't want it really runny and you don't want a wet crumble, okay? So just add that in, and that, as it just bubbles up, so you don't want to add it when it's like boiling and boiling and boiling, because it'll thicken instantly. So you want it to just be simmering, and then it. bring it up to the heat. You can see the grapefruit have turned orange as well. Yeah, yeah, they do, don't they? It was interesting, they, they change colour like that. So let's just bring that up to the boil and then we're ready for the oven. Okay, so you can see it's all thickened up and you've got this kind of apple sauce with the Florida grapefruit segments. And you'll see the Florida grapefruit's kind of gone that more orangey colour. And it has just, it will just bring the apple flavour out, I promise you pop that into a tin. So we've just got one of these sort of traditional enamel tins that will go straight in the oven. And then if you look, look how chunky and nutty this crumble is now. I oh, love this way of making crumble. It's like proper crumble. This is crumble you're gonna remember. It's just crying out for vanilla ice cream. Are you vanilla ice cream or custard with your crumble? Oh, do you know what? I don't think I've never had with it crumble. Is a vanilla custard? Uh, vanilla ice cream? Oh, you custard, are you? I'm See, I'm. But that's not oh, like a good I'm ice cream. cream. Ice cream Especially all the way. Especially maybe like a flapjacky crumble, though. Ice cream would be bad. You know what's coming here? Post in the comments below. Let's do a little survey with you guys. Vanilla ice cream or custard? No cream. Hot None of that. Hot custard. Yeah, custard or ice cream. You decide. <laughs> matter oh, anyway, I'm, bloody, I'm having cream. ice cream. I feel like I'm gonna have Just to a now. beautiful scoop of vanilla ice cream on that. Oh my goodness. Right, this is going into the oven, 170 degrees. I think this is gonna take about 30 to 40 minutes until it's all golden. Obviously, remember, the apple is already cooked. It's about this crumble. Full of beautiful California walnuts, oats. It's gluten-free. It's gonna be absolutely delicious. Mm. Oh, I'm so excited. These croissants smell flipping amazing. We have got beautiful croissants filled with cured ham, mustard, cheese, tarragon, thyme, little egg yolk. Oh, it's time to eat, I think. What do you think, Emily? Are you ready to try one of these? I think so. Look at those. So much so that I've got a very special knife. A bread knife that I was given to by a German baker and it's like the best bread knife for cooking, for cutting lovely. Can you see me cutting yeah. this? Yeah. Whoa. I'm so hungry. <laughs> there we go. Can you see that? Are you on second? Yeah. Oh, look at all that swirl of loveliness. Shut the camera four for me. Which one's camera four? That one over there. Just tilt it where you're at. Tilt it where you're at. There you go. A little bit further in. Ooh. There we go. I'm just going to pass that down to the magic hand that you only ever see the hand. Yep. 
and have a little taste of this. Carlos, you want a little taste? Oh, there we go. <coughs> have a little go at that. Mm. That is good. Do you have ham? Mm. Ham is just present. The tarragon for me is really coming through. Absolutely delicious. Really, really nice. Now, if you want the recipe for these, scan the QR code along the bottom and it will take you to our website. You will get the recipe there. Go get your just roll croissants. Make these, they're amazing. Right, this crumble is ready. And this is what a proper crumble looks like. Look at that. Oh. It's good. Now, have you decided ice cream or custard? The jury is out. It's up to you guys. But for me, this is the most amazing crumble. It is sweet, delicious underneath. We've got apples. We've got Florida grapefruit, all married up together. Sweet, tangy, fruity, delicious. And then this incredible California walnut crumble on top. Now, if you want the recipe, scan the QR code along the bottom. That will take you to my website, petersidwell.com. You can get all my recipes there, or you can scan this QR code, and it'll take you to Florida Grapefruits website, where there are loads of other recipes, as well as this one. Or scan this QR code, and it will take you to the California Walnuts website, where there are loads of great recipes, great ideas to create delicious, healthy, nutritious recipes that are gonna be amazing. Thank you very much for joining me. I will see you on the next episode.